I am Lisa, the artist behind Lockery Fine Art. Today I am going to do a tutorial on blending wet into wet. For this tutorial I am painting on a Fredericks. These are just little boards that you can get that have the canvas attached to it. It's actually just a piece of cardboard. Extremely inexpensive. You can get them in big sets from like dickblick.com. I will link that below in the video description. But those are really really nice for just doing little studies and practicing different effects. I am using Liquitex Basics in this tutorial. That is definitely my preferred brand of acrylic paint. I just like the consistency. It works really, really well for the techniques that I use and the way that I paint. A couple things before we get started. I am using a mop brush. This one is a low Cornell brush. I'm probably saying that wrong. Every mop brush I have ever found sheds like crazy. It's just a part of the brush. It sucks, but it's just how it works. If any of you have found the magical mop brush that doesn't shed, definitely let me know in the comments below, but I have searched for years and have not found one. These brushes are never used for scooping paint up and applying it to the canvas ever. It is the one brush that I have a absolute rule for. Normally there are going to be exceptions for every rule, not with this one. I just lost my brush. This technique is going to take you a while to get used to. Don't be frustrated if you don't get it right away. You're going to need to practice. So when using this brush, what your goal is, you've used your regular paintbrush to apply the paint to the canvas. This brush is essentially just getting rid of your brush strokes. You're not trying to blend the two colors together. Like in this case I'm using blue and white. I'm not trying to blend it into a medium blue. If you blend and blend and blend, you lose the definition between your lights and your darks. All I'm doing is lightly, lightly, I cannot stress that enough, lightly brushing over those areas to get rid of the brush strokes, only to get rid of the brush strokes. You're not actually blending with this brush. The other thing you're going to notice, I'm holding this at the very, very end and keeping a very loose hand with it. I'm going in half circles. I'm going in every direction, side to side, diagonal, little half circles, every direction. Your goal again is to get rid of your brush strokes. Now, when this brush gets too much paint on it, because you are going to be lightly picking up some of the paint from the canvas onto the brush. As this gets dirty and has more paint on it, when it's wet, it will actually create brush strokes instead of taking them away. When you get brush hairs in your painting, because you're going to with a mop brush, the easiest way to get them out is to use a separate stiff bristled brush. I just use a small one and scoop those brush hairs out and then fan over it again with this one to get rid of whatever marks you left with that other brush while picking out hair. I know it seems like extra work and annoying and it is annoying, but it's how it works. Another thing, this brush only works wet into wet, which means every area that you're blending with it or getting rid of your brush strokes with has to be wet. If you've got a wet area up against a dry area, you're not going to blend that wet into dry with this brush. It will not work. All you're going to do is move paint around on the wet spot. You end up with a heavy ring of paint around the edge between the wet and the dry paint. So this brush is not going to work for that. Only for wet paint. I've done this painting in two sections. First, we're going to do the clouds. And with that, I'm blending with the mop brush. I am misting it lightly as I go along with the airbrush. And I know everyone keeps thinking they can use a spray bottle to just lightly mist the paint to keep it wet. If you use a spray bottle to mist your painting, you're going to have heavy water droplets come out. And when those land on the painting, as you br brush over them, it's going to lift that paint off and you have these little dots all over where you don't want them. So definitely you're going to want an airbrush. And to me, an airbrush is just a must have item if you're doing acrylic painting in a realistic style. And you don't have to have the full setup that I have. You can get a hobby kit for like $25, $30 from Amazon. I'll put a few links below in the video description. You can use those. That's what I used for years before I got my full setup just for misting water. They're not, those hobby kits are only single action, so they're not good for spraying paint because you don't have any control of how thin or thick your lines are, how much paint, all of that. But for misting water, they actually work really, really well for that and give you a nice even mist. So for the background, I did mist quite a bit as I was working on the clouds and I used the mop brush. So let's go ahead and start with the tutorial. I'm starting off with a base coat of a light blue. I dry that and then lay the clouds on with white and the same light blue around those clouds with a filbert brush. I'm using an airbrush as I work to mist water continuously to keep this paint wet for as long as I need it to. You can keep paint wet for hours using this technique. You'll notice I am not at all worried about my brush strokes here. I'm going to blend that out with the mop brush. I'm slowing this section down to real time because I want you guys to really see the way that I'm moving the mop brush for blending this. I'm continuously misting water as needed to keep the paint wet. If you get it too wet, it won't work. Not wet enough, it won't work. You just have to get used to balancing that out. Notice with the mop brush, I'm moving it in every direction very, very lightly. Just the, the very, very tips are just barely hitting the canvas here. I'm not trying to blend the blue into the white. I'm just trying to soften out those brush strokes so I get that nice kind of airbrushed look. 
I'm just going to continuously blend as long as I need to because I can use that airbrush to keep misting it. As I'm blending, I am getting quite a few hairs that are coming off on the canvas. I'm using this stiff brush to just kind of scoop those hairs out one by one. Again, keeping the paint wet as I do this with the airbrush. As I, after I scoop out the area that I need, I can go back and blend. And I can go back and add more highlights of white as needed as I'm blending because that paint is just kept wet the whole time. I'm doing the tulips a bit different. I'm not using the mop brush so much to blend as just using that filbert brush and letting the paint blend into each other with that brush. There's a few areas that I will use the mop brush, but very, very rarely do I need it on something this size. And you just have to get used to the consistency of how much paint versus how much water you need on your brush to keep the paint blending very, very smoothly. If you end up with a whole lot of little white dots like that dry brush look, that lets you know you need more paint and water on your, your paintbrush. If the paint is running, you definitely have way too much water. Too much, definitely not a good thing. There's no magical recipe for how much paint versus how much water. You just need to get used to it. Each color will vary too. I find when I use the Liquitex Basics, I don't love their reds and oranges. They're really, really thin. So I don't use almost any water with those colors because they are so thin to start with. But all of the other colors, I am thinning out quite a bit with water. One of the things that I like so much with acrylic paint is you, if you have a layer that you don't love, you can immediately dry it and then go right into another layer on top to, to tone it down or blend it more or whatever it is that you need to do. You don't have to wait a day for it to dry. So that's kind of nice. And with this, I am letting it dry in between some of the layers. I'm working wet into wet for the most part, but there are a few times that I go ahead and let it dry and then layer more colors on top, whether that be because I want richer yellows or whatever it is. But you can layer on top of layer in addition to working wet into wet, I'm combining both layering and glazing with wet into wet at this point. Because I'm painting against a blue background, I am using a fair amount of white in my base coats just so that I cover the blue all the way and can still get the richer oranges when I come back through later. On this flower, I'm going through and just kind of outlining some of my dark areas because there are a lot more dark areas than on the first flower. So I'm just sketching that out very, very loosely. I'm going to be blending wet into wet over all of this, but you'll still see some of these dark areas that I've sketched out through those other layers dried those darker sketched areas in before I went on to the next layers. Now I'm just blocking in very loosely where I want some of my lights and darks to go, the general colors. I'm not worried too much about keeping this wet and everything blending perfectly because I'm going to blend softer on top of it later on. So at this point, nothing's too serious. You can see that I'm using the filbert itself to blend some of these colors in. I'm not really having to use the mop brush too much because this is such a small area. If I were painting these flowers much, much larger, I would be using the mop brush. I prefer using the filbert brushes for the most part because it's really easy to keep your brush, brush strokes from being too harsh like they would with a, a straight or a flat brush. I'm slowing this down again so that you can see the actual brush strokes that I'm doing for blending these wet into wet. Here, the all of the paint on this flower is pretty wet. If my paint starts to come out dry where I'm getting those little dots of the dry brush look, I need to add a little bit more paint and a little bit more water to the brush. You can see I'm not moving very fast. If the paint starts to dry, I just mist it lightly with water so I can keep all of these petals wet as long as I need. And I'm just very, very lightly brushing over them to lighten things up or darken them as needed. You'll notice how rough everything looks at this stage. Even though I'm blending wet into wet for several of these layers, I'm probably the third layer in as far as letting it dry and then painting over it. I'm keeping it very, very rough at this point. My last layers will all start focusing on making sure that I soften out all of these lines as needed. Part of the reason that I need to layer so many times to get these colors is that, again, with those reds and oranges with the Liquitex Basics, they are very, very thin. So it's gonna take me quite a few layers to get the color as rich as I really want it. I've switched to a smaller flat brush for getting some of these details or the smaller details into the flower petals. You could also use a liner brush for this. Towards the end of each of these tulips, I go back through and add my highlights where I'm using a bit more of the actual white mixed in with some of the light yellow just to bring out certain areas. Onto the last tulip, I'm having to paint parts of it white before I get started so that you don't see that black showing through the other colors. The colors that I'm using are very translucent. Really any colors that I use though, that black would have shown through. So I painted it white first and then let it dry. Now I'm adding in my highlights or my lighter areas with the yellow. I'm keeping all of this wet besides the white that I let dry first. These colors that I'm adding now are all being kept wet as I fill them in. And that way I can just let them softly blend in to each other. Even though this is sped up quite a bit, 
you can tell these each petal i'm spending a, a fair amount of time on each petal and so if i didn't have that airbrush to keep misting it there's no way that that paint would have stayed wet long enough i don't like to use the mixing mediums that are supposed to slow the drying time of the acrylic paints it gives them a really weird consistency and they don't blend quite right i'm just not a huge fan of those actually i'm not even a little bit of a fan of those so here just using that airbrush to lightly lightly mist water is really really helpful I fill in the rest of this tulip the same way that I did the other ones, just building layer on top of layer, partially blending wet into wet and partially just kind of outlining and getting my details in. I hope this helps you guys out in understanding a little bit more on how to blend your acrylic paints. If you're working in oils, you can use a mop brush as well. I use a different type of mop brush and that is listed in my video on oil painting supplies. I'm also considering doing a tutorial for the clouds that I did in the recent Orca painting. If you would like to see that, let me know in the comments below.